This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Recently, BuzzFeed published an article talking about Jennifer Lawrence's bid to quote, win us back after going from peak cool girl to Hollywood's most hated figure. In typical of BuzzFeed's journalistic practices, the author was quick to deduce that the reason for Jennifer's decline in popularity is naturally everyone's favorite scapegoat, the patriarchy, saying quote, it goes without saying that both the cool girl and the pick me girl have spun out from a patriarchal dream in which women are trapped in a cycle of chasing male approval while competing with one another. But our decidedly negative response to the pick me girl also exposes how little tolerance society has for any woman who is transparently trying. Women must be effortlessly cool and appealing without agenda. Okay, I completely disagree, but I'll come back to that later. To understand the fall of Jennifer Lawrence, we have to start with her rise to fame. And to understand her rise to fame, we have to look at her fall. No, that's not a circular argument. I'm actually talking about her fall at the Oscars. No, no, not that one. Yep, that's the one. 2013 was an incredible year for Jennifer Lawrence. Despite taking the most public tumble, her stock skyrocketed. Since she not only took home the big prize, she also charmed the pants off every interviewer and viewer. Her post-Oscar circuit was full of magic moments that got laughs, captured hearts, and launched a thousand gifts. Yeah. Do I look like a new girl, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Woke up and tried on the dress and it fit, thank God. And, and then um, I took a shower and <laughs> I don't know what I was, that's what I did. And then I got my hair and makeup done. And then I came to the Oscars. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did a shot before I. <laughs> Why was all of this so charming? Jennifer Lawrence in her eternally real moments of a novice at the most glamorous event of the year made us all feel like we were at the Oscars with her and how we would feel in this exciting yet intimidating environment. Hi, yeah, this is my life now. Hey Jeff, hey Jennifer, how are you? She also served as a massive contrast against the image of the perfectly coiffed starlet that has rehearsed every moment in front of the mirror before unveiling it to the camera, which unfortunately brings me to Anne Hathaway. As great of a year 2013 was for Jennifer, it was a terrible one for Anne. Despite also walking away with an Oscar, this one for the supporting role in Les Mis, Anne's response to her name being called and this opening line, It came true. <laughs> oh kicked off the massive surge in hatred for the actress. Like Jennifer, Anne too had a huge rise to fame at a young age, since she was only 19 when Princess Diaries was released and became America's sweetheart. But after seeing her Oscar acceptance speech and the press conference, people started to wonder if she was kind of fake. See for yourselves. I had a, uh, I had a dream <laughs> and it came true and that can happen. And that's wonderful. And so that was all I was saying was, was that, um, was that it can and it did. Excuse me, that's not articulate. <laughs> so the BuzzFeed article is partially right. The public doesn't like it when people are trying too hard. But no, this is not sexism because this is not just directed at women. It's about men too. A lot of people are absolutely irked by Jimmy Fallon because of his overly eager tendency to fake laugh and just clap away like a seal no matter what his guests are actually saying. People want something real, which brings me back to Jennifer Lawrence, the realest of them all. Down to earth, charming beyond belief, funny as hell, and beautiful, but best of all, talented. After 2013, Lawrence had some of her busiest years with back-to-back -back hits and heading up two massive franchises. But then came the hiccups and controversies. Jennifer Lawrence's lack of filter, which initially lent to some lovably real moments started to come at a price like in 2016 after her Golden Globe win for joy how did you see yourself for the Oscars you can't live night? your whole life behind your phone bro huh? you're just not gonna we can't do that you gotta live in the oh, now sorry 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 you know? <laughs> how do you see yourself for the Oscar night and how was we're at the Golden Globes if you if you put your phone down you'd know that <laughs> Or later in the same year when she was telling this story about filming in Hawaii for The Hunger Games. We were filming in Hawaii and there were sacred rocks and they were, I, I don't know, their ancestors, who knows. Oh my God, they were so good for butt itching. <laughs> <laughs> Just be like, oh! <laughs>
Many of her interview gaffes were followed by apologies, but Jennifer was clearly growing tired of interviews, as well as the press's interpretation of whatever she was doing or saying. And it showed. In 2018, while promoting her newest film, Red Sparrow, she sat down with Stephen Colbert, kicked off her heels, and knocked back six shots of rum. Let's talk about the movie. Red Sparrow. Uh, yes. Red Sparrow. Yes. Red Sparrow it, it, is a movie. It's a psychological spy drama. I'm a woman, but it's not like, you know, like, uh, it's just like, it's entertaining. Don't put any political weight on it. Like, if you're like a typical hater and you have a blog, don't go. The movie didn't really do well, and after hinting that she may take some time away from the industry, Jennifer did just that. She took three years away from the limelight, returning to sit down with Colbert, this time to talk about Don't Look Up. And there was something really different about her. And no, I'm not talking about this. Lawrence was far more subdued, less frantic, but there was a new nervousness. Instead of sitting back, she seemed uptight as if walking on a tight rope, trying not to put a step out of line. In 2022, she appeared on Vogue to answer 73 questions, and here she just seemed done. No nervousness, but no smiles, no delight either. What was going on? Even with this new, more reserved return to the limelight, the controversies have continued to follow her, like when she made this comment during a sit-down with Viola Davis. But wait, we'll get to that in a second, because I want to talk about today's sponsor. As a YouTuber who loves to work from cafes, because honestly, I am so sick of being at home all the time, it's incredibly important to have a reliable and secure internet connection. That's why I use Surfshark, which is a virtual private network that lets me work without any restrictions and keeps all my online activity private. Because it's my business if I want to look at videos of cats getting scared by cucumbers all day. Ah! Okay. With Surfshark, I can also easily change my virtual location and access content that's not available in my region. On streaming services like watching The Office for the hundredth time instead of even considering watching a new show, Surfshark also helps me bypass censorship and access blocked websites. But it's not just about accessing content. Surfshark also keeps my online data secure. While I'm using public Wi-Fi at a coffee shop or hotel, I don't have to worry about my personal information being compromised. Surfshark encrypts my internet traffic and protects my privacy. So if you're looking for a reliable and affordable VPN service, I highly recommend Surfshark. And with their 30-day money-back guarantee, you can try it out risk-free. Click the link in the description to take control of your online privacy and security. And make sure to use the code BAGGAGE to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Thanks for listening. Now back to the video. Okay, here's what Jennifer Lawrence had to say during her sit-down with Viola Davis. So I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie yeah. because yeah. it wouldn't work. We were told. Girls and boys can both identify with a male lead, but yeah. boys cannot identify with a female lead. And not to mention this comment during an actress roundtable. It was incredible to not be around toxic masculinity, to get a little break from it. And we would always, it, it did always just kind of make us laugh about how we are, you know, how we ended up with the, um, you know, women shouldn't be in roles like this because we're just so emotional. <laughs> and we're just, you know, so, and it's just, I have seen, I mean, I've worked with Brian Singer. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen emotional men. Okay, the problem with holding these opinions aside from the first one just being straight up wrong is that Jennifer's down-to-earth image is being overshadowed by her pessimistic, rude, and polarizing tendencies. And polarizing views end up dividing your audience and making it that much harder for your movies to do well. It is crucially important for big actors to have personality, but there is a sweet spot of how much personality is acceptable. And being too much is incredibly detrimental. The likes of publications like BuzzFeed will say, and have said, that calling a woman too much is sexist when in reality, it is a completely valid criticism of a person when their job, their career, involves them embodying different people and different characters for a living. And if your personality is so overpowering, if the things you say are so controversial that it becomes impossible for you to disappear into the role that you're supposed to be playing, then yeah, it's going to hurt your career. And no, this doesn't just apply to women. There have been moments when men are too much. The best instance that comes to mind is, um, a certain superstar jumping on Oprah's couch like a goddamn maniac? You bet this was way too much. And not to mention the Matt Lauer interview he did where he was way too opinionated.
opinionated and controversial. And you know what? Tom Cruise realized that and reeled it back in, realizing that his fame, weirdly, isn't actually about him. All of this recognition and superstardom is for the roles that he has and continues to embody on the big screen. And if he makes it too much about him and what he thinks and what he believes, then he will only hinder his career. Which is why we don't hear anything from him anymore. We just see him focused on making good movies. But let's come back to Jennifer Lawrence and to, in my opinion, the biggest reason behind Jennifer Lawrence's fall in popularity. Well, I just generally, um, once I enter a public place, I become incredibly rude. I turn into a huge <laughs> asshole. You get icy? And that's, yeah, and yeah. that's kind of like my only way of defending myself, you is just being... Put the black hair yeah, in the Yeah, just stairs. being an Like, see somebody walking towards my table and just go... <laughs> or like, can I have a selfie? And I'm like, no. What Jennifer has clearly forgotten is that a lot of her lovable moments have been from her fangirling over celebrities and showing us that she is just like us. But her sudden decision that she doesn't want interactions with her fans or thinks it's perfectly fine to be rude to them just makes her seem deeply entitled and elitist. The feeling that she has been giving off for a while is that she really doesn't want to do this. She doesn't want to meet her fans. She doesn't want to do her interviews. But the problem is that this is the only lens through which the public gets to interact with her since she doesn't have any social media, which is fine. But her pessimistic, frustrated, or self-aggrandizing interviews are just continuing to hurt her public image. And who are these interviews for if not for her fans? So why should or would fans feel excited about Jennifer Lawrence when she doesn't want to engage with them properly, not through the press, nor in real life. 10 years on after that Oscar night that was so pivotal in Lawrence's career and so detrimental to Anne Hathaway's, the actresses have yet again traded places. Anne's popularity has recovered and she continues to enjoy a wonderful career. And despite suffering similar setbacks of privacy intrusion and the harsh glare of the press, Anne has come out of it full of positivity and smiles and gratitude. Gone are her days of her trying hard. Instead, she's relaxed and more herself. But best of all, here's what she has to say about her perspective on her fame. I woke up one day and I said, when people come up to you and they want to tell you they love you or that they like you or that they've watched your movie 3,000 times or they want a selfie or they want a hug or they want a picture or they want a picture for their daughter, all they are saying is, thanks. It's beautiful. And there's a very good chance, you know, You'll just leave the interaction and you can just focus on the next thing. There's a very good chance they might remember that forever. Mm -hmm. So do you want this memory to be one that makes them feel badly about themselves or do you want it to be one that makes them feel great? Because the reason you won the lottery is because they bought a ticket. <laughs> Maybe that's something Jennifer Lawrence should think about. Oh, thank you. For watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested in checking out Surfshark, please click the link below and make sure to use the code BAGGAGE to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.